It's Tommy Rogers from Between the Buried and Me. What's going on? What's up? See, you got you got real excited there. I did, I did. You don't <laughs> want to know what's going on under the desk. <laughs> um, probably the 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 snappiest name in the whole of the music industry, Tommy Rogers. That's Is it? like yeah, it's like Max Power, like from the Simpsons. Oh, I don't know. You know? Um, I think it's good, but we were talking about <laughs> we, were ta- <laughs> we were talking about accents just before we kind of started recording, and um, I said that I always feel like you guys have the best accent. You're my first American guest, so I had to. Oh, pay- really? Pay- nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I had to pay tribute to your accent, but also you you said that we sound smart, so you know this is already started <laughs> complimenting each other, so it can only go up from here, right? Exactly, exactly. Um, firstly, how are you doing through the last eighteen months of covid and no gigs and all of that well I, i'm really good right now yeah i mean i think like everyone there's been ups and downs um but yeah we've been busy we we actually just finished a tour which was crazy i mean i think we were, we were like one of the first bands to actually get through a tour sure. um but yeah i mean we we wrote colors too during the pandemic and that was Amazing. it was a good experience you know we, we just lucked out in a lot a lot of ways and everything's good on on with my family and yeah i'm just i'm at home which is it's good to be back um being on the road was good but it was very stressful just from the day to day just kind of the what ifs and i th- i feel like every day was just like a another small victory here and there a hundred percent but but we got through it so yeah you're you're lucky you were able to do a tour because so many bands uh even now started to announce cancellations yeah. or postponements um going back to the beginning of your career you guys have been going for a really long time. Yeah. How, how have you managed? I'm a <laughs> <laughs> how have you managed to sustain such a lengthy career in a in a world where progressive metal is is not you know everyone's normal day to day listening? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's 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 not something I think about ever, honestly. Um, and we've always kind of been the type of band that just goes year by year and album by album. We, mm-hmm. we never have been like, Oh, five years from now, we're going to do this or that. Um, especially in the early days, we, we thought, you know, we were just doing it for fun. Yeah. And then it slowly turned into our job. And, and then, you know, I think there's, there's a few things I think helped us achieve longevity. And, and first is we really lucked out with our lineup. You know, when we, it was, I guess, 2005 ish was when we got this current lineup and, you know, we just really clicked on so many different levels um, Mm -hmm. as people, which is probably the most important part, you know, because you're essentially living together on the road year after year, you have to get along. Yeah, yeah. Um, It's like being in relationships with five different people at all times, you you know, so, um, (laughs) but um, yeah. And then creatively, we, we really connected you know, as a group, and that's just getting stronger. I, I think mm-hmm. a lot of bands that kind of fades away. But for us, I feel like even after all this time, we're still surprising each other with what we're working on and, and kind of um, we're all growing in kind of our own way. And, and as a group, that's cr- creating something so different than it used to be. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know, we, we really just enjoy writing music still. And I think a lot of bands, the, the writing part's kind of the, the hassle. Um, okay. At least, from, at least from, you know, talking with bands over the years, it seems like a lot of bands, that's like the part of the job that they don't love that much. And for us, you know, we, we've always really loved creating albums and, and creating these songs. So, your, your album. yeah, and that and, you know, just getting along and all that. And, and you know, on a fan's perspective, I think we've just – we, we've kind of set ourselves up in a way that our fans don't always know what they're going to expect. And it's mm-hmm. kind of fun to be along for the ride. And, you know, I, I think our fans enjoy that. So I, I think all that kind of, you know, gives us longevity and I, I'm sure there's a million ways to analyze all that, but yeah, I, I think from the surface that that's what it is. I think you guys have got <clears throat> such a, I really hate the word unique because I think yeah. unless you're playing the Peruvian nose flute, you're not going to be yeah, unique. Exactly. Yeah. But I, I do think with you guys, there is s- such, um, you do have a unique sound and I'm trying to, I'm trying to go through a thesaurus in my head to find a better word than unique, but I do think you've got such a great sound. It's, it's epic that, you know, you guys are 
time signature hungry um yeah. you know and 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 your your live shows from i mean i've never seen you live unfortunately but having seen footage of you you mm-hmm. always deliver such an amazing show but with touring the world tommy and with you know crazy songs that go on for like 20 minutes i want to ask you what has been the biggest spinal tap moment of your career hmm that's tough <laughs> like just like it so well there's a few moments that were directly related to spinal tap one oh, okay one, <laughs> <laughs> well one time in particular on Ozfest, uh as a a prank one of the i don't even know who did it honestly I'm, i have a real bad memory but someone did the um what was the thing that came down oh my god my mind just went blank what's the it's one of the seventh wonders of the world it's out your way the oh, fuck <laughs> Oh, my oh God. no, I don't even know. <laughs> Do you need some my good- wife's right here? Well, yeah, what I can't we'll think edit it. <laughs> yeah, on Spinal Tap, they have it come down and it's oh, Stonehenge. It's Stonehenge. Oh, there we go. Stonehenge. God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My brain. Yeah. So someone someone did that like they did in Spinal Tap. They they had a small Stonehenge come down. Oh my God. It was amazing. <laughs> it was a it was an amazing moment on stage. But um, as far as like real life, I, I think the most kind of like awkward, I assume that's what you mean by spinal tap moment. Awkward, hilarious. Um... Yeah, probably. Honestly, when we went to the Grammys, um, oh, okay. walk, w- walking the red carpet, which is uh, it sounds like such a d- delightful thing to do. <clears throat> but for us, it was uh, I felt like I was 18 again at a party I wasn't supposed to be at. And right. <laughs> just kind of awkwardly walking around, you know, <laughs> with my band and, my, you know, our wives and stuff. And uh, we were trying to get interviews with people and they just, nobody was having it. Like okay. it, it was, it was, there was no chance they were going to interview any of us. They were mm-hmm. just like, ah, get away basically. So yeah, it was, it was very embarrassing. It was very funny. It was, it was very in a weird way, BT Bam. Like it just kind of felt right for us. Cause that's just, how it is you know we were just kind of like these oddballs at this thing that we we belonged but we felt like we didn't you know it was it was a funny moment has, has there often <laughs> have you often found because of i know we touched upon this a moment ago but do, do you often feel that because of the style of music that, you, that you've gone for i know it probably maybe wasn't necessarily a conscious decision to you know see how many times signature we can get into one album yeah. or see how complicated we can make things but do you find that that makes finding audience more difficult because the niche is is smaller with you know, however more complicated and complex your music gets well that that's something we've never thought about sure. i mean we've ne- there's never really been a point in our career where we're like how can we what kind of music can we write to get more fans that's never been a discussion no. we've had that's never um you know i think it, it's ingrained in us obviously you're like oh we want to write songs that people care about people, and, yeah you know people want to buy and whatever but um yeah in the early days i mean i i think the only time you know early on i think any young musician especially in this world you're you're trying to show the world that you can play you know mm-hmm. i think back then we we're like oh we can shred we can do all this crazy shit <laughs> you know we can go from this to that and it feels <laughs> somewhat normal but but now it's just like we've gotten that out of our system. Now we're just like, we really want to write, we want to write really good songs, Mm. but we have our own because of the unique way we write and how we all write very differently from one another. Like, I think we, our idea of like a a really good song is still very off the wall compared to most music, you know, especially in in mainstream music. And so for us, it's, it's always just been like either excite you know we're all about exciting ourselves you know it's it's yeah. like w- when you're when you're writing stuff you want to be like oh shit this is exciting or like you know someone brings something to the group and you're like oh i could do this with that or i could i hear a, a acoustic r- rendition of that brutal metal part that could work in over here you know there's all these like fun little moments and and circumstances that that make the writing really exciting and that's kind of what we're always shooting for is that that feeling um, okay. I don't really know what that feeling is, but we're we chasing it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We're chasing it. You know, it, it's more than like, okay, how do we, you know, do this 
to get bigger or whatever you know it's for us it's just we want to write good music and and be genuine in that moment i yes. think that's that's the most important thing with albums is just capturing that you in that moment you know essentially but you've always had fun i i think as a as a musician myself i think it's i i, I can always hear that in mm. post-production you guys have had fun you know for yeah. example there's like a banjo in fix the error like yeah. there, there didn't need to be a banjo in fix the yeah. error but you guys just went hey do you know what this is missing a banjo <laughs> well that <laughs> like- that part in particular is hilarious because i'm i'm glad we didn't do it there was a moment where we, we were taking out all the heavy guitars in that part and it just sounded like <laughs> a literal like pa- power metal bluegrass part <laughs> like because <laughs> we kept the screams in like we took out all the like metal guitar and it was just but yeah yeah like you said that's that's it's fun it, it really is fun and that's something we kind of learned pretty early on is that you can take these non-traditional instruments and methods and yes. and you can you know utilize it in a way where it like brings apart new life and kind of gives some, you know, even something as little as a, like a banjo part or, or like matching something on acoustic where you never would have thought of, like it makes parts sound different and makes things yeah. sound cooler. And, and that's yeah. something we've really grown to enjoy is just finding ways to, to make like a simple thing kind of give it new life through like weird yes. production techniques and stuff, yes. which it's it definitely adds i mean when i because I, firstly i should have said at the beginning of the interview congratulations on colors too it's an amazing thank album you. thank you um it's, it's really good i got paid to say that and no, i didn't really um, <laughs> um but no seriously it's really great um and uh, again just going back to that kind of banjo moment it, it adds almost an element <clears throat> of, of not only musical ability which you know you said yourself you guys don't you know you're tr- don't need to go down the path of making complex music because you, you've done it and, and so on in moving forward. Yeah. But it just adds so much personality and humor. You know, I heard when I heard that for the first time, I rewound. I was like, really? Is, yeah. is this happening? It's no different from when I watched, um, you know, a Dream Theater concert and they, they, they break into like the Simpsons theme tune halfway through. Yeah. There's just so much personality. But do you, do you think that, you know, adding so much personality and so so much color, good word, use of the word, uh, into your into your music. Do you, do you think that that is something that potentially could attract more fans and a bigger fan base? You know, especially as musicians, they're going to say, "Hey, check out this metal band." Not only do they play really great songs, they add fucking weird instruments into their music and have a laugh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I can't really answer that. Hopefully, I mean, you know, I think, like you said, as you know, if you are a musician or you record music and, you know, you, you hear these songs and you kind of like listen to it on a more deeper level rather than just throwing it on is like, there are these little nuances pretty much constantly happening. Yes. And if, if you're into any sort of production or, you know, writing, it's, it's, it's fun. Like you said, it's, it's exciting to kind of like, okay, what's next. Mm-hmm. And I think for us, like, I mean, at the end of the day, metal is ridiculous, right? It's a, it's a, it's a pretty ridiculous type of music you know so it's like to create these moments that like you said almost make you laugh or whine and be like wait a minute did that really happen yeah 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 we that's fun for us in the studio like jamie king our producer like he he's a you know he he's like one of those dudes that flips out when something like that happens so it's super motivating to like create those moments you know um but yeah i mean i hopefully like music like ours will continue to get pushed to new people i mean i think even you know like you said we've been around a while so i mean we've seen it kind of slowly transition for instance we toured with dream theater for ages ago and it it was a big struggle on that tour for people to to hear like screaming it was so it was it was so new to most fans then and we still meet people that were like dude i i never heard anything like you guys on that tour and now you know i love you know, more extreme metal or more experimental metal. And, and so it's, it's cool to be a part of that. It's just, it's tough to like get people past that barrier. Mm-hmm. And for a band like us with music, that's so dense, it's tough to get past like someone, you can't make someone like sit down and pay attention to something. No, which, because a lot of people, when they listen to music, they don't want to sit down and pay attention to it. It's just yeah. like something that's part of their life. That's kind of like, carrying the mood of whatever they're doing which there's nothing wrong with that but 
finding a way for our type of music to be involved in someone that yeah. uses music like that is really tough because it is it's so fucking much you know i kind of think actually <clears throat> i think musicians enjoy sitting down and dissecting stuff you oh, know I, I think that you know we <clears throat> touched upon like time signatures and stuff earlier but yeah. like um you know i think uh uh, if I hear a band, you know, drop into 1916 for absolutely no reason other than because they can, I'm like, hey, that's really cocky, but I need to go and listen to that again because that was super <laughs> fucking cool. Um, There's always a reason, by the way. <laughs> <There's> <laughs> always a, a reason. Always a reason for 1916. Yes. Um, yes. You, you, it's got to make sense. It, it doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think there's a bar on the new Haken album that's like 33, no, 30. 33 34 i think it is uh, anyway anyway um i mean, know how you account that <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> the drummer tried to explain it to me i just hung up yeah. um so having been around since kind of the early noughties and you, you touched upon this a moment ago you have experienced a lot of change not only in the direction of music and your music but also with things like the internet and i ask mm -hmm. all of my guests this question do you think the music industry has benefited from the internet or do you think it's been the music industry slitting its own throat with reference to streaming and more accessible mm. and free music. It's tough. I mean, a, a band like us, I would think it's probably helped. It probably depends on the type of band. Like, sure. I mean, if you're, if you're like kind of catering in the like major label, you know, I don't even know what world you would call that. Like, I feel like that's probably been hurt a lot by it i don't know but it's, it's it gives you so much more reach than you you would ever have yes um but there's also the the competitions so much more you know there's so many more bands um i think once one thing we've noticed you know from from being basically a hardcore band back when we were young like like nobody started bands back then to make money because nobody made money you, even the even the big so-called big bands that i remember seeing like there there was still 100 people tops at most of those shows yeah you know they weren't making if a, if a living it was very little so i mean i think you know from where we came from it was just people starting bands because they really wanted they had either had something to say or they just really really love writing music and wanted to be in a band and yeah yeah, yeah i sure. think i think now it's it's more of like <clears throat> younger kids are are it's like a a business decision like Hey, mom and dad, I want to go do this for a living where I was like, Hey, mom and dad, I'm gonna go try this. It's probably going to fail. Nobody makes money doing this, but I'm going to try to make it work. Yeah. You know? Um, I th but I think because of the internet, you can make a living out of it, you know, in your, in your apartment, you know, which is something I don't think you could have done 20 years ago when we started. And to somebody listening now, Tommy, <clears throat> that's an aspiring musician, you know, singer, songwriter, or they mm. just want to get into the music industry in general. What would your advice be to follow the footsteps of somebody that's been as successful as yourself? Mm. I was blowing too that's much tough. smoke with that question. I should have stopped. <laughs> <laughs> that's tough. I mean, I mean, patience. I, th I think anybody that's been doing it a while knows nothing happens overnight. And if it does, it normally goes away quickly. I've, I've kind of seen that happen with, a lot of people and a lot of bands over the years. Um, but yeah, just patience. Um, don't let failure change it. I think failure is good in a lot. It makes you learn okay. so much. Um, I mean, I think any, anybody that's been doing anything for a long time probably realizes that failure is like a good motivator and, and mm. helps you in the end. Um, and I don't know. Don't try to copy everybody. Don't try to, yeah. don't try to do what you feel like just because there's 6,000, you know, that's for, this is not calling anybody out, but let's say there's a, a you know, 6,000 dudes playing guitar on Instagram, mm -hmm. just do, doing playthrough videos and, and all these people are getting, it's like, I want to do exactly that. Like, how about maybe try to put your own twist on it? Or how about mm -hmm. just because something you're doing is not showy or technical, like just just write a good song and do it that way or like there, there's so many different avenues to do things where you don't have to necessarily copy what seems to be working online because that's the thing about online it's like you, you don't really know what is working because out of all the 20 people that are crushing it there's just 
thousands and thousands and thousands of people that aren't crushing it all. Mm. And they're just trying to copy something, you know? So, you know, I think with music is just trying to find your little voice, but it is hard because everything's been done, you know? And, you and, know, and, and that's the all... thing <clears throat> you, you come across like Instagram and stuff. And as you say, you see one guitarist doing something and then, and then you know, from there you kind of see, as you say, 6,000 guitarists doing, yeah. doing the same thing. And, and I, that's why I kind of, I kind of think that to a degree, um, the internet has certainly highlighted mm-hmm. how much talent is out there, you know, compared to when, you know, you, you guys were, were obviously yeah. starting out. It's crazy. Um, so you've been on tour, um, luckily through COVID. Um, when can we expect to see you over in the sunny United Kingdom? And we never call it sunny. So I don't know why I said that. <laughs> <laughs> it's sunny sometimes. It's just, um, it's what you said I don't know. I mean, hopefully next year. Yeah, we're, cool. we're kind of in the process of figuring all that out um things are still up in the air kind of getting over there and all that Mm -hmm. so yeah hopefully we'll have info soon um yeah that's something we're kind of anxiously waiting on trying to figure out well for now i would urge everyone to go and stream not only all of your music but also colors too your most recent release it really is the production (laughs) when i was thinking when i was listening to it i i kind of thought the production is on par with like the new Devon Townsend album, Empath. Yeah. That it, it's like a, it's a great wall of, uh, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a wall of production you guys have, have managed to get out there and and it, it just sounds great. And I am so looking forward to getting a free ticket and hanging with you guys. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. <laughs> you didn't say no. You didn't say no. Um, but Wrong thank- camera. No. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for your time. Hey, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Uh, okay.